A very warm welcome to our service of BCP Holy Communion. A warm welcome to those people who are going to be watching this at home today. Um, I hope you've had a really happy Christmas and a joyful time and that you've had some time either virtually or in real life speaking to your families. We take a moment of silence before we begin. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through Jesus Christ, your Son, grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we can share in the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now David's going to read us our epistle. <coughs> The epistle is taken from Galatians chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba! Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the end of the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the book of Luke, beginning at chapter 2, verse 15. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem 
and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at, the shepherd, at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Here endeth the gospel. Glory to thee, O Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And we affirm our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, who was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in the Lord Catholic and the Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to do the sermon from here so that the camera can catch me and I don't have to move it around too much. I think I've mentioned to some of you that um, two weeks ago today, uh, David and I discovered we were going to be grandparents for the fourth time. Our son is um, 40, he was 40 in June, uh, it's their first child. It's very interesting when we read the shepherd's story and we get to that last line about Mary pondering things in her heart. James and Caroline are quite anxious. They've got to a point in their lives where they're used to not having too much responsibility. You know, they, they hold down good jobs. They have three cats, but a baby is a new thing, something quite different. A child is quite a responsibility. This child, this child that is talked about in today's gospel, the child that the shepherds were heard the angels talk about and were sent on their way to meet. This child is no ordinary child. This child is the Son of God. We've talked a lot over the past few weeks um, in, in my ministry with the children in school and um, again at the crib service I used it and then on Sunday morning without knowing that I'd used this particular song Jill Roby was playing the organ and she played it and um, it, it was just really really odd because she didn't know because where I've been using this particular song um, was in the school context and with children and it's called it's a, it was on a starry night and it struck me this year because of, we're living here now in the rectory and because I visited Israel um, the darkness for the for the shepherds if you can close your eyes and imagine that darkness, 
Perhaps they were near enough to beckon him to see a few candles flickering or a few lights burning in the distance. But it would have been pitch black. We stayed in the Golan Heights, David and I, um, and we had a picture window, sort of that size of our window there. And at night, the bed faced this window. There were no curtains. And uh, I remember just looking out of this window and it was pitch black. The lady who, we were in the um, kibbutz at this point, and the lady who had rented out the, um, the apartment said to us, uh, we first opened our restaurant, which was in the, again in the kibbutz, um, when the, uh, the troubles were on. And the next night, the night after they opened, they had to close because of the aircraft going over and the bombs. So they opened one day, closed the next. And she said, you could just hear the planes and see them in the darkness. There's no lights, just the, the noise. We often talk about Jesus being the light in our darkness. Jesus, the light of the world. Especially at this time, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. But we very rarely experience blackness. We were talking, Jill and Don were talking when they came in because it was windy last night. Occasionally we have a power cut. And I think it's only when we have a power cut that actually we experience now darkness. But if you look into the sky at night, I used to have an app on my phone to, to stargaze, but the stars seem almost brighter um, than, than they really are in a place where it's really, truly dark. And it's hit me this year with COVID and the way that Christmas has sort of been different for most of us. But Jesus, when you step back and enter into the darkness, is brighter than we ever imagined when we weren't in this situation. He is our hope. He becomes our peace. He becomes the one thing that is constant, the one thing we can trust. God with us, Emmanuel. God come to earth just to be like us in full humanity, to experience the darkness we see. And that has struck me so much this year. I, I, I did some visiting on Christmas Eve, um, predominantly to people on their own. And as I got to one house, I went to Ralph first, and, and some of you will know Ralph. And, and I could see a man in the window and I thought, well, that's not Ralph. And it was Glyn and Lorraine and they'd gone round on Christmas Eve to make sure he was okay and to do the little things that needed doing. And that was the light in, in Ralph's day. You know, it was God with Ralph. And it's, it cheered me up tremendously that here, we've just left church. We've, we've left, we've done a, um, a little outdoor Christmas service. And they've gone straight from here to, to Ralph. And there, there they were, a living embodiment of light in darkness. They were with Ralph. They'd gone from here to be with him to make sure that he was okay. And as I went around, there were different scenarios, different people in different contexts. But the one constant with the people that are our community, so I, went, I visited people who come to church and people who have no faith. Was, there was a sense of peace and joy. So when I went to see Sue Goodwin, and she'll see this today on, there's just a peace and a joy about her, a contentment in a situation, because she really has self-isolated. I stood on the doorstep, she was inside the house, and there was a porch between us. Um, but she has an assurance, a faith, a solidness about her, because she knows what she believes, and it was it's a constant thing. God is with us. We'll get through this. We will. David's almost 95% we're sure. David's 95% protected because he's had his first one. He's only got a week to a, a, a week and a bit to the second one. You know, God is with us. And in a few months, as we gain more and more immunity towards this and more and more people are inoculated against it, we'll start to emerge again into a world of normality. But I hope 
and I've tried to stress this right the way through Advent. I hope the one thing you take with it is that we need each other, we need our friends and our family, we've, we've really appreciated them more because we can't do the things we used to do, but also we need the assurance of God with us. Without him, we just become like floating ships in a, in, a, in a drifting sea. We're not quite sure where we're going. We're not quite sure, but with God at our side, with God at the helm, steering the ship, no matter how bad it's been, we've had our hope. And that's what I'm taking with me into 2021. That my God is my hope, an ever-present thing in times of trouble, an ever-present being in times of trouble, that I'm never on my own. I think I've seen that in some of our congregation. They are so solid in their faith, they are so rooted in their faith, that you can tell that they can get through this because God is with them, Emmanuel. So, to all those people who uh, might be watching this now, and you know I'm speaking about you, you have been a real example to me during my time here at St. Peter's, but also it has taught me that it doesn't matter what the world throws at us, God will never leave us. God is here, he is constant, through the Holy Spirit, and because he gave his one and only to be our saviour. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's take a time of prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militants here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church and the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant all that do confess thy holy name, may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity in godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all the servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good example, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. We just take a moment now to bring before God those people who we know and love, who need our prayers at this time. 
remembering David Bennett and Maria. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in thy holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we, from time to time, most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are humbly sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve in newness of life, to the glory and honour of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised the forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Jesus Christ saith to all that truly turn to him. Come to me, all who travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteousness, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you, with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give th to do so. <coughs> it is very meet and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to thee, 
O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, therefore with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercies dost give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and, in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son and Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most precious body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us peace the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. Do this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful.
As our Saviour Jesus Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received thy holy, these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of thy most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope in the everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away of the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.